Um, so 10 years ago, 2010, I was down in Tijuana and we we're working on a, on a documentary about uh, human trafficking and there was, um, my, my little brother knew some guys that were down there and, and, uh, and they were involved in some stuff. And one of the guys who some of us would probably count out, quite honestly, because he was deported from LA and he was down there and he was you know, doing dirt and he was selling dope and he was involved in some stuff that he wasn't proud of. And that's kind of all he knew and he was an American trying to survive and where he got deported to, that's kind of all he knew. So, so we're down there and I'm, I'm hanging out with them and, and talking to him and we're driving around and he's showing us some stuff. And as we go to drop him off, we said, um, hey man, when we come back, you know, is, is there uh, something you want us to, to bring you? You know, some, I, I seen how he was living. He wasn't like a Scarface, you know, he didn't, didn't have a car, didn't have, the, it was just low level, and so, you know, I was like, man, this dude, he, he seems super cool. And he, I don't think he really wants to be doing what he's doing. And so he just said, yeah, man, um, can you bring me a basketball? And uh, I kind of chuckled a little bit because he's as tall as me and I know he ain't playing basketball. <laughs> I'm like, come on, dude, I know you ain't playing basketball. But he's like, no, 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 not for me. There's a, these kids in the neighborhood. You know, there's a basketball court down the street and these kids don't get to play because Nobody's got any sports equipment. Nobody's got a, a ball, nothing that they get. So I was like, wow, I stayed quiet for a little bit, thought about it. And I was like, you know what? Why don't you give us a couple of weeks and we'll come back and bring you a bunch of stuff. We'll bring you toys and clothes and food and all kinds of stuff. So, um, so I was like, what the heck did I just get myself into? <laughs> I was like, no, man, what promise did I make? You know? So, uh, so we got back and, um, you know, it was just kind of weighing heavy on my heart. And, uh, so, I said, you know what, we're gonna do this toy drive event. And, and at the time, um, I was doing a lot of stuff online. We had video interviews, I was just doing all kinds of cool stuff. And um, I had a name, you know, I, I was working with a lot of these top artists and a lot of stuff, and I had influence. So um, I was like, man, you know, let me just use my influence and my name to kind of get people to give us stuff to take down to Tijuana and help some other people, you know? And so, um, you know, I, I don't have any kind of talent. I can't sing, I can't dance, I can't rap. I see the, you know, the drawings, I'm like, I can't even, I would be doing stick figure, like little monitos, I'm like, I can't do, I can't even do any, I don't stay in the lines, you know, I don't do any of that stuff. And uh, so I'm like, I'm horrible with any of that stuff, with, with talent, but I was like, but what I do have is, you know, I have a network and I have some influence, so, you know, all right, God, you know, if you can use me to do that. So then I put the word out. And um, I said, I'm gonna have this event and we're gonna call it Love Thy Neighbor. Yeah. You know, and it was, you know, had the meaning of, hey, our neighbors to the south, we're gonna love on them, we're gonna get them some stuff. And it's also the words of Jesus, you know? So, um, so we're like, all right, well, let's, let's do this. You know, let's, let's try it out. 2010, and uh, God used this guy who most people would count out, who would say he's a dope dealer or he's deported or he's got no job, or he's got no, whatever it might be. And he used some guy who we wouldn't even think of to plant a seed in my heart to go and start this, this nonprofit. And to me, I was like, man, Lord, all right, well, if you can, you know, like I said, he uses the foolish. So I'm like, all right, use me, I'm the foolish. But to know that God uses things that you would not even imagine or think of, and sometimes the, the least likely, um, so, you know, I'm sitting there, I'm like, all right, well, 10 years later, we're still here, we're doing stuff, and, and God has done some awesome stuff through, through, uh, through our, our little nonprofit, with the little nonprofit that could, you know, and so, uh, so to me, some of, the, some of the stuff that has been, like, the, the biggest blessings has been um, our team and, and the people that, that God is using to go and encourage and help others, and some of our team members are here. You guys raise your hands or stand, stand up real quick. Um, so... You guys, you guys are awesome. Thank you guys for coming. And, and, um, and so through, through the, the stuff that we're doing and just being obedient to that call, and, hey, Ruben, go do this, go do that. We've, I've, I've dragged these people through some crazy ideas and through some crazy stuff that you would not even imagine. But uh, uh, just being obedient, just keep, you know, all right, got to keep going, got to keep it moving. Whether or not we had churches backing us up, whether or not we had a rich uncle that was cutting a check or a corporation or anything, we just kept going. 
and we still do. And, uh, and, you know, barely now, 10 years later, some churches are getting behind us and, hey, you know, we like what you're doing over there. And, you know, and, um, and so I'm like, all right, well, we're going we're gonna to keep going and, and lives are going to be affected and impacted and we're going to make some change. And um, some, some of the, to me, some of the biggest rewards are seeing, you know, of course, it's always awesome, like when you give a toy to a little, you know, an orphan child that doesn't have anything. And you're like, wow, that's... And that's the most awesome feeling. Anytime that God uses you for anything, it's the awesome, yeah, the, just yeah, the most yeah. greatest feeling, right? Yeah, right. right? So, Amen. and even just, just knowing that, like that's, that's so cool. But knowing that God is using those around you that you've planted seeds in, that you've encouraged. Um, even just out of suddenly, like you're, let me get off. <laughs> but uh, she's amazing. And uh you know, God has used what we've done here to impact her life. And what she's done is just amazing with all the people that she's encouraging. And, uh, and so what she's been doing is, is uh, you know, she, she deals with some stuff. And, and, and we all do, right? We all deal with, with some, 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 some battles, some inner battles. And, and, but knowing that God has used this to help her break through some of those, those, yeah. those dark patterns sometimes that we go through, that's the real reward to me, yeah. you know? Yeah. And so, um, so thank you for sticking, sticking along, alongside us. Yeah. <laughs> and so Barnabas, he was, uh, he was called the son of encouragement. So he, that, that was a nickname. His name was Joseph. His real name was Joseph. Um, but they called him, they called him, they, he had a nickname, the, the son of encouragement. They called him Barnabas. Who, who has nicknames here? Anybody got a cool nickname? What's your nickname? <laughs> Holy. Holy. Holy, okay, cool. <laughs> Holy, well, what's it mean? What's it, it's not. Um, so it means set apart. My dad. Set dad, apart? My dad wanted that to be my, that's my mom. My dad ah. wanted that to be hey, my mom. first name, but my mom. <laughs> so it's like nice and now it's stuck uh, <laughs> yeah for real yeah I, I got some buddies like that too where I'm just like oh what's he has a real name oh what's his real <laughs> guys I grew up with too I was like who who are you calling what like no man this is so and so but uh I know we all have nicknames and even you know in some of the neighborhoods it's like you know even around here like you see like oh, hey, that's La Smiley, or whatever, you know. That's uh, this lonely girl, or whatever, you know. But, but, you know, but think, think about having a nickname of, of, of an encourager. You know, I, I, they used to call me Face. That was like my, my rap name, Face. I guess because I made all these like, weird faces, I guess. Now, like, my mom always told me, don't make that face, it's going to stay. And I'm just like, all right. Now, like, I, I do this. This old Robert Nail, you know, I'm like, all right, hopefully I don't stick. But, um, but yeah, we all have these nicknames and, and, uh, and just, just thinking like, dude, this guy, he had this nickname called the Encourager and uh, Son of Encouragement. Like, that's, that's pretty awesome. But, uh, but encouragement came in many ways. So if you, if you read about his story and, and uh, he, even, he even encouraged giving where, you know, at some point um, he went and he sold one of his fields and he took the money and he laid it at the feet of the apostles. And he, he, he funded his own ministry. He went out and he did his own thing. And people, he led by example. Like, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go sell my stuff. And I'm going to come back and I'm going to serve. And then I'm going to go back and do. And to me, I was like, dude, that's awesome. If you guys only knew how much like money and time and energy and effort and everything I've put into just our little ministry and our little stuff. Ah oh, man, you'd be you'd be beating me up for it. Like, really, really, you did all that? You know that sacrifice? Like, hey, you know, sometimes it's not so smart, but God's used it. You know, and and so, um, you know, there's been times I've, I've I've been so broke. I'm asking my friend, hey, can you guys pay my cell phone bill this month? <laughs> hey, you guys, hey, I got bald tires. Who can who can help me fix some? You know, it's it's gotten to that point, but but lives are being touched. You know, and lives are being touched, and so and I, I think that's that's. That's the main thing is, is uh, knowing that no matter what your past is, no matter what you've done, no matter 
where you've been that God is gonna use. If you have that willing heart, God's gonna use you for that. Um, you know, there was a, there's a, an organization over in Soledad State Prison. Anybody do prison ministry? No, not yet at least, right? But uh, so I never imagined myself going into a prison, doing any kind of prison ministry, ever, ever, never. Um, I had some buddies that were in prison. I had one friend of mine who just served 22 years in prison and he just got out uh, a year ago. 22 years in prison. But uh, while he was in there, he got a degree in theology, he got a business degree, he became a pastor inside, he started art programs, and he was changing lives on the inside. Changing lives on the inside. I, I was tripping out, you know. So he, he, uh, he was an artist too, a, a awesome artist. He, he, I think you've seen some of his artwork, we had some stuff inside. I have a pretty large uh, prison art collection, and, uh, and he used to send us a bunch of art, and, uh, and he did this Carlos Santana piece of him playing on the, on the, guitar, the guitar. And um, uh, Mayor Salas came to our office. We used to have an office right here, right in the building behind. And uh, she's seen this art piece and she bought it and it was hanging in her office for a while. And uh, I was like, hey, do you know that's prison, from prison, right? And there was, <laughs> she was like, I don't care, it's an awesome piece. And yeah, later on she was like, hey, so what did he do? <laughs> uh, I was like, oh, you don't wanna know. But, uh, but so he, he's out now and, uh, and he's, he's working up in Homeboy Industries and he's still up there and he's changing lives. And um, just to know that we were able to do some stuff with him while, we, while he was inside. So while he was in there, he reached out to us and he says, um, hey man, we're doing some art shows inside and there's all kinds of events and stuff that we're doing in here. How, how would you guys like to come up and, uh, and be part of some of these events? I was like, okay, cool. Like, I, I've never been in, in, inside of a prison like that, so I, you know, I was kind of scared. It was funny, the first day that we went in, um, me and Bo, that, you know, a buddy of mine went up, and we're, we were in the front, we just kept walking, walking, and walk, you know, there was a lady guard that was right in the front, and she's like, have you guys never been inside before? Like, no, so I can tell you guys are wearing the line to the floor there. And so we were there, we're, I was scared, you know, I didn't know what to think, and, um, and then like the, the second time that we went in, you know, um, th this is when you know it's God and it's just divine. I, I've never been in. So I, the only thing I had to relate to them was, hey, I did dirt, you know, and you guys did dirt. I just didn't get caught. You know, you guys are in here, I'm out here, and I just didn't get caught. But doesn't mean I didn't do some of the stuff that you guys didn't do, you know. But, uh, you know, I, I just just had to go in and just love, love on people. And, and uh and so I, I was scared and I didn't know. I'm like, God, what do you want me to, why are you? I was kind of like Moses where it was like, send someone else. You know, I, well, why me? I'm not trying to go. But uh, so, so you sit there and you're just like, all right, I'm, I'm, I'm down to go. I got to go. I feel like I'm, I, this is a call. I, I gotta, just got to go. I answered the call. So we're in, in this big old, the yard where everybody's out there lifting weights and doing all that. And, uh, you know, in the hot sun and we're out there and, and uh, we were able to bring in this, uh, this Christian rock band, and we brought a DJ, and we brought all, it was super cool. We helped put together this event, and we're out in the, in the yard, thousands, no, it was a, a thousand, a thousand guys out in the yard. You don't know who's who, you know, if anybody's saved. There's a little small pocket of Christians, and that you don't know who's who, but, um, so God puts us out there, and we get to just love on people. You see some people out there in the yard having Bible studies, so, we're trying to kind of stick close to those guys, you know, we're like, hey, you know, you know it's like you, you always want to have your back like up against, you know, you're just like, what's going on? But uh, it, it was a, such a trippy, um, they're just, it's a different kind of love because um, the, the freedom that they know is, is different. Like they, they have a true, real like freedom in the Lord, like because they don't see the walls. They're just like, we're just, we're just here to, to love on people and anybody that comes in and, and love on these guys. And, it, it's, it's just, it's different. And if you ever get an opportunity to go inside and just love on some people, just, I wanna encourage you to do that.